The System Restore feature in Windows has been around forever, and it saved me plenty of times, although it's not always 100% reliable. And it got me thinking, what exactly does the System Restore feature restore and back up? I mean, I know that it obviously does system files, but does it do the entire Windows directory? What does it do outside of the Windows directory? Because I know that it also claims to not restore or delete any personal documents and stuff like that. So I kind of looked into it. Now, the first resource that I came across, of course, was the official Microsoft documentation. And the summary they say is, system restore monitors system changes and saves the system state as a restore point. If a system problem develops as a result of a system change, the user can return the system to a previous state using the data from a restore point. And then it goes on, system restore does not restore user data or documents, so it will not cause users to lose their files, email, browsing history, or favorites. System restore is also made available to users in the Windows recovery environment or safe mode, making it easier for them to restore their computer to a state before the problems occur but it doesn't exactly state what directories or anything specifically. And it turns out that the system restore feature actually is a little bit more interesting than I even anticipated. It actually uses something called the volume shadow service, which I'll explain what that is, but needless to say, it actually kind of backs up quite a bit more than you expect, even if it doesn't use all of it, which actually might come in handy. So that's another thing we'll go over. Now, before I get too far into it, I want to point out that the system restore feature these days is actually not enabled by default in Windows, Windows 10. Windows 11. So I actually recommend you do go enable that feature. You can do that by going to the start menu and searching system restore and then click create a restore point. Now, despite it saying create a restore point, this actually just takes you to the general system restore settings. So just ignore what it's called. Anyway, in this window under protection settings in this box, it'll list the drives and whether or not system restore is enabled on them. I would definitely at least recommend enabling it on your main C drive. The other ones, probably not necessary because it's only going to restore system files and program files anyway. So unless you're installing programs to other drives, it won't make much of a difference. If it's not enabled, just click to highlight the C drive and then click configure, choose turn on system protection, and then select whatever max usage you want and what you're comfortable with and just hit apply or okay. Now there's a few things that will trigger a system restore point creation. First is a application installation. So you install a program that usually will create a restore point. Also Windows update typically will. You can also schedule them with the task scheduler or you can manually create one of course. And also interestingly, if you initiate a restore using restore point, that will also create a restore point. So you can basically restore if you mess up a restoration. And when you do go to restore a point, if you select it manually, you can actually choose to scan affected programs and it will try and give you an idea of what programs might be removed or drivers as well. And those are just the ones that you've installed since the last system restore point. All right, so we're going back to the main question. So what exactly does this do? And I actually kind of had to dig quite a bit to find this. There is actually a list of file types that it will scan for across the entire drive apparently. So what I've read is there was some ancient article and this is the only place I've ever seen this mentioned is that it will back up the entire Windows directory. So no matter what, it'll back up the entire Windows directory. And then for the rest of the system, it will use a list of file types that it will scan for and monitor and restore those. So this means that even though it says it's not going to restore documents and stuff because that's not on the list of file types, if you, for example, create an exe file or you're a developer or something, and maybe you use other file types that are on this list, theoretically, it will actually roll those back and get rid of them. So that's something to be aware of. Besides just restoring file types though, it does restore drivers, programs, like I mentioned before, and updates. So because of this, I believe it has to have some other kind of additional logic in there besides just scanning for, if it's a file type that matches this extension, restore it. If not, don't, because otherwise, how would it undo the installation of certain programs without deleting the whole directory? So I think it must also go into the registry. It does back up the registry, by the way, and see where programs are installed and just delete that whole directory too, I believe is how it works. Otherwise, like I said, if it just deleted all the files, it would just leave empty directories for those programs, which it doesn't do. Now, I'm not 100% sure because this is not documented anywhere, so that's a bit annoying, but that's basically the best I could find. Now, here's an interesting thing though. I'm talking about what system restore restores and backs up, but actually behind the scenes, there's actually way more that is backed up 
than what System Restore actually uses. And that's because ever since Windows Vista, the System Restore feature uses something called the Volume Shadow Copy Service. And this is kind of like a totally separate Windows service that just is used by System Restore, but it's also used by plenty of other things. And basically that creates a copy of your entire drive effectively. Now it doesn't create a one-to-one -one copy, but it basically creates a difference copy. So you probably have seen this in some programs that do backups that are incremental backups. So instead of literally making a copy of your whole drive and doubling the amount of data, if you change a file, it'll literally just record the change in that specific file. So it might only take up like a few kilobytes, even if the file is very large. So effectively what happens is when you go to create a restore point, it really actually calls this volume shadow copy service, which then creates a snapshot of the entire volume, or at least the difference of it, so that it can go back and recreate what that whole drive looked like. So really it's not just storing just the stuff that system restore point is using, but actually the entire drive. And that actually has an interesting implication because you can actually go into that shadow copy, explore it, and take files out of it, even older versions. If it's in there, if you deleted a file, you delete it from the recycle bin, but it was in that snapshot, you can actually go back and get it, even if it was not something that would have been restored by System Restore. So here's how to do that. There's a program called Shadow Copy View by Nearsoft. You probably heard me talk about him before. Basically, he creates all these very specific Windows utilities. One of them is going to allow you to look into these shadow copies. So you open it up and it'll list them right there. It'll show you the date they're created. And these are effectively system restore points, unless you have some other program that creates them for other reasons. And in here, you can basically see it is an entire snapshot of the whole drive at the time. It's almost one to one compared to what you see on my main drive now, because I created this test shot not too long ago. But again, it's not a one to one copy. It just stores the differences. So if there's no difference, then it's not going to take up any space. So I'll show you an example. I'll create this test file in the C drive and just say this is before the snapshot and then I'll go and create a system restore point. So here I'm going to do that and then if we refresh shadow copy view we can see there's a new one that appeared and there is that file that I just created. So now what I can do is go into this text file and change it to pretend like I messed it up or something. But if we go back into that shadow copy, I can actually use this program to copy it out and let's just put it in the B drive. And if I open it back up now, it's what it was before. So this is not even something that would have been restored if I ran a whole system restore because it technically would be a personal document or whatever, it's not on that list. But because it is backed up by the shadow copy service, which doesn't care, I was able to go back and grab it anyway. So that is something I even did not know before researching this video. So basically, if you mess up a file, you could theoretically use this as kind of like a Hail Mary to see, oh, I hope it's maybe in a snapshot, you might be able to restore it. Although I definitely would not rely on this because if you aren't creating snapshots regularly, then you don't know when the last one will be. And Windows doesn't tend to keep too many anyway. We saw that there was a hard limit on the allocation size. And I think by default, it's only like a few percentage or like 10 gigabytes max. It's not gonna store too much. You'd be way better off using the actual file history feature, which is dedicated for this purpose. It will hourly back up all your files or the differences of them. So if you do mess up a file, you're way more likely to be able to restore it using that feature. And you could just buy a dedicated hard drive through USB or something put it on there, then you don't have to worry. I still would have a actual backup drive to do like a full backup, but that is still better than nothing. And I did make a video talking about that before actually. Another reason why you don't wanna necessarily rely on System Restore, especially for malware or something, is I've actually seen examples of certain advanced malware where one of the things it does is deletes all the shadow copies. So you can't go back to a previous one knowing that you have a virus. So that's definitely something to be aware of. You're better off just creating you know, backups that are disconnected when you're not creating the backup. And that way, if a virus gets you, there's not gonna be any way for it to infect the disconnected copy and you can restore from that. Really, in my opinion, the best use case for System Restore is if you do install a program that for whatever reason messes up Windows or you uninstall a program and it does the same thing, but it's not a virus, that's probably where you would use System Restore. The only problem is there's plenty of times where I've tried to do a System Restore and for whatever reason, it fails. And it doesn't tell you why, possibly it could be an antivirus program interfering. So maybe that's something to try is disable the antivirus if you're trying to restore. Don't do that if you have a virus and that's the reason you're trying to do it. Just 
something to try. All right, now, because I think I rambled a lot in this video, let me try and sum it up more concisely to answer the question, what exactly does the system restore feature backup and restore? And basically, anything on this list of file types, no matter where it is on the drive, and it also apparently backs up the entire Windows directory. Now, when I said that it backs up the Windows registry and drivers, that all is included in the Windows directory, so, that's why it does those. And also to be clear, it doesn't appear to exclude any directories. So if you have an exe file, for example, in your documents folder, it will also roll back and restore those too. And that's because theoretically a virus could put itself anywhere, could even be put in a user directory. So it's not like it just decides, well, anything in the documents folder must be documents. We're not gonna touch that. It literally looks anywhere for those file types. Like I mentioned, I do believe that there is some additional logic in there for removing program file directories. Not 100% sure on that. You could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that it definitely must do something like that. So yeah, I learned a few things in making this video. Maybe you did too. If anything, you learned, you should probably enable that feature because I think it's really useful. Don't know why it's disabled by default now. And now you can know what exactly it does. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Of course, if I messed anything up, let me know and I'll make a correction in the pinned comment, description, all that good stuff. If you like this video, maybe consider checking out the rest of my channel and subscribing. If you do, also be sure to click the bell to enable all notifications. These days, YouTube might not show you videos even if you do subscribe. If you wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is the one where I was talking about that file history feature and how to use that and why I think you should. So you can just click on that right there. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.